Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. You've reached the recap for episode number three. Anyway guys, let's get right into this recap. Sean says upon waking up in the morning, he feels guilty, he feels ashamed, he feels embarrassed because he believes that he has been letting Jade down says to Tyler that him and Jade went through it last night and he was bawling like a baby. So much of my past that I can't get out of my head that I, I'm so ashamed of. And then Sean says these past couple of days he hasn't been himself. He says that he's not showing up like he should be. Sean says that Jade does so much. She's the one planning this wedding. Says that he needs to cater to Jade. It made him do some self-reflecting. What is he doing out here that he doesn't normally do back at home? Sean goes on to tell Tyler that normally he doesn't drink. Tyler says he doesn't either. And we have flashbacks from when Sean was in treatment. Sean says that he's pretty much been on vacation mode and he's wondering why does he not feel like himself? Sean says another day of day drinking. He didn't like how he felt. Sean says to Tyler that he has to cut himself off. He got to cut the alcohol. Tyler says that he thinks that because of Sean's past addiction, the alcohol is triggering him. Jade is not feeling well. She says that she feels a lot of pressure in her face right now. After the fight last night, she is very frustrated with Sean. You mean that fake fight that you made up? Jade says she woke up this morning. She says she thinks that her body and the stress and everything is causing her not to feel well. With the anxiety, the stress of selling the house, the wedding and everything, she believes that's making her not well. Now she says she had viral pneumonia before she went on this trip. Jade says that she's on all types of medication. She says her cough is coming back. Says that she feels like she can't get out of bed. The medic is coming to see about Jade. Sean says he feels bad because Jade is going through it. Says until the virus works itself out, Jade is gonna feel like crap. Sean says the fact that they're out of the country weeks before their wedding is a huge stressor. He definitely has some things that he needs to work on before the wedding day. But right now, Jade's health is the priority. Sean says as long as she's not feeling well, he'll be right beside her to give her whatever she needs. Jade says the medic says that she needs to relax. Her body is definitely exhausted. Jade says that she doesn't want to miss any of this trip, but basically she has to take care of herself. She says she needs to focus on hydration, relaxation, and take it easy today. So Sean is here talking to the other couples about how Jade isn't feeling well. Sean says that he's going to be taking care of her today. Cheyenne says that she thinks Jade is under so much stress right now. She says stress from the wedding planning, selling the house, that situation with them last night didn't help and Cheyenne says she just feels really bad that Jade isn't feeling good you know who is back you guys don't let them get a minute to breathe without y'all up in they face do y'all Corey looks thrilled Zach says yay another activity and he says that he's excited about it even though I honestly can't tell we're ready to turn up the heat you guys didn't turn on the heat last episode with that moaning now I watched Teen Mom Family Reunion last season did we have a workshop every mother freaking episode did we we might have but this just seems like a lot to me dr mike tells the couples to meet them on the beach in five minutes and everybody makes their way and cheyenne doesn't look very happy either the couples make it out to the beach and there's these huge blocks that have as you can see all these words on it and macy's like what are we doing with this activity and where can I get these blocks? Micaiah says, although every couple has their own personal issues, there are themes that come up in every single relationship. Dr. Mike says the issues that you will be dealing with are the building blocks of your relationship. Dr. Mike says what you'll see behind you are 16 blocks and they have eight issues between all of you. The couple's jobs is going to be to rank the issues within their relationship that they want to work on. So Tyler says that they have to stack these blocks based on the ranking in order of importance in their own personal relationship that they want to improve. Tyler says he knew that anger was going to be the very top block. Kate says that communication and anger are the two things that they struggle with individually. Kate's top block was communication how she says that she gets PTSD from the trauma that she's dealt with when Tyler gets angry and then she feels like she has to fix it 
Kate says that she chose communication as the top block because when she's struggling mentally, she really doesn't want to put all that weight off onto Tyler. Tyler says that his biggest issue is anger and unfortunately, as you can see here, he says his biggest issue with anger is that it triggers her. Makaya says that she sees how the anger and the communication issues are cycling each other. Kate says that it's a great representation of their relationship and the solid foundation that they've built. But she says also shows that there are still some things that need to be worked on. And so Makaya asks, are they ready to break through those issues? And they literally have to go and knock the blocks down. That seems fun. Tyler says that he feels like knocking those blocks down symbolically was a way to say, you know, let's knock this down and build it back up. So Macy and Taylor are up next. Dr. Mike tells Taylor, this is a way for you to tell Macy exactly how you feel. Taylor tells us here that he does not always speak what he's feeling. He says he thinks this exercise is super important. Taylor says he wants to better himself and their relationship and he thinks that it's going to be good. So the very first block that the both of them pick up is trust. They trust each other with their lives. Macy says she feels like her first two blocks, her and Taylor are on the same page, but Macy says they're starting to differ as they get higher up. She says having those two foundations be the same does make her feel good about them. Macy says that Taylor has a hard time communicating issues that bother him. Macy says she was not surprised at all when the top block was communication. Macy's top block is intimacy, which means these, these ones on the top, again, in case you forgot, are things that they want to work on in the marriage. Macy says the reason why intimacy is the top for her is because that intimacy is what gives her her self-confidence. So it's always going to be at the top for her. Macy believes that it should always be priority. Taylor says that he thinks better communication can lead to intimacy. If they can make more time for each other in the evenings, it can help them to feel more connected. Dr. Mike asks, are you two ready to break through the issues in your relationship? How the heck did you get, how did you guys get those blocks so high up? I have no clue how they got those blocks so high up. Anyway, they're going to knock these blocks down. Next up is Cheyenne and Zach. And as soon as they stepped up, they was like, thunder and lightning is that a precursor of things to come or what's that about diane says the thunder is going off and she wants to run and hide i would really love to know how the heck these blocks are going to stay up with this wind this thunder and this lightning i just need to know their base is the same as macy and taylor's trust and commitment zach's number one issue is intimacy zach says that they do have a good sex life but it doesn't just revolve around sex the intimacy part says that intimacy is a whole lot more than just sex community Communication is what Cheyenne puts at the top and Zach says that that's something that you're always going to be dealing with and you know you're always going to be struggling with in relationship. Zach says there's always room for improvement and Cheyenne says clearly and they knock down their blocks. Last but not least we have Taylor and Corey and I'm so grateful we are missing a couple. Not grateful that Jay's sick just grateful I don't have to deal with this one more time. So Corey and Taylor are putting up their blocks and Corey's looking at hers and he's like okay we're not that far off Taylor's biggest issue is trust Corey says that her having trust at the top was no surprise there Taylor says that she has to start um forgiving him for cheating on her in the beginning of their relationship girl that would have been the end for me I said it before and I'm saying it again y'all had nothing invested at that point and trust is also at the top for Corey Cheyenne asks Corey why is trust all the way up there and he says because he was a D head five years ago. Corey says that Taylor doesn't trust him because he cheated five years ago. I believe it was six years, but whatever. Corey says he regrets it every day. And then Corey shouts out that Taylor doesn't trust me ever. Kate's like, well, you cheated on her. Kate says that hearing that Corey cheated on Taylor makes her sad for Taylor. Cheyenne says that she feels bad for Taylor that everything is coming out in front of these couples. She's not sure if everybody knew that Corey had cheated. Cheyenne says now that the cheating has been put on the table, she thinks that is bringing opportunity for deeper seated feelings to come out about it. Kate says, I can understand why it would be hard for Taylor to forgive him. If Tyler cheated, she would not be able to stay with him. Kate totally understands why trust is Taylor's number one. Corey admits that Taylor's distrust, most of it is his fault. I think all of it's your fault. You're saying most, but I think it's all. And Cheyenne was saying that Corey was still in the streets. So Zach says Corey revealed that he cheated on Taylor five years ago. He's sitting back like, holy crap. Zach says he feels for Taylor, but five years is a long time to be in the doghouse for slipping your Mickey in somebody else's drink. 
Zach, if you don't shut the hell up and get off my mother freaking screen. And truthfully, this is why if you can't forgive somebody cheating, then you should just leave. To be harboring that unforgiveness for five years, not that it's not normal. It's perfectly normal for you to still feel resentment after somebody cheats on you, no matter how long ago it's been. But you also decided to move forward with a relationship. Tyler said, if it happened today, we would be getting a divorce because they both think alike and they both think like me. Like there is no coming back from cheating i am really sorry corey says that taylor still hasn't forgiven him for something that's happened five years ago dr mike says to corey you know your tone of voice it comes off like you're rationalizing like what you did and dr mike says you're trying to you know you're kind of trying to explain it away taylor says in terms of trust corey just wants her to get over it because it happened so long ago taylor says yes it was five years ago but she's not over it yet that she feels like it's not something that they've worked through yet corey says that he's ready to move forward and they knock their blocks down so dr mike says we found out what's plaguing y'all's relationship and what you want to get out of this experience makaya says this was basically a roadmap to see what you all need to work on but also to see the foundations of your strengths. Tyler says that cheating is a whole nother ball game. And unfortunately, Corey did damage. So now it's his job to correct the damage and it doesn't matter how long it takes. Tyler says he doesn't know how long it's gonna take, but Corey broke it. So it's Corey's job to fix it. Everybody's back at the house and Cheyenne asks Corey if he's surprised at what Taylor put as the top of her issues. And Corey says no. Cheyenne asks, are you surprised that Taylor doesn't trust you? And Corey says no. Cheyenne says Corey has to realize that cheating is something that he needs to work through. And right now he doesn't have the proper tools to work through it himself. Cheyenne says that hopefully while they are there, they will be able to put the trauma behind them. So Tyler asks Corey, when did it happen? How long ago was that? Corey says that it was about five years ago. Taylor says it was six years. Corey says early on in the relationship, he made a mistake and he's paying for it to this day. Corey says there's more to me and Taylor than just my issues. Taylor says that she's definitely still holding a grudge about it and she doesn't forget that's the problem. Taylor says that she always remembers and she always thinks that there could be something. Taylor says it's hard when somebody breaks your trust like that. Corey says that it's like a roadblock in their relationship that they cannot get over. Corey says that he's learning that he has to do the best that he can to rebuild the trust between him and Taylor. Corey says that it's dragging them down like an anchor. So Taylor says to Corey that I think this goes hand in hand with your commitment issue. Corey says, I've been committed to you for six years. Taylor says, yeah, but you can't progress. Corey says the only progression from here would be marriage. Taylor says that she doesn't feel secure with Corey without a ring because the ring symbolizes a higher level of commitment. Girl just leave because that doesn't even make any sense taylor says that she doesn't feel like they're fully there yet it is very hard to understand when these people talk because they just talk weird i don't know if it's just because they're on camera and they're nervous or whatever the hell but taylor you're not speaking very clearly ma'am so now i gotta make it clear for my viewers taylor is saying it's not even that she thinks he's gonna cheat on her again i don't know why she's not using this wording but that's what she's saying. Kate says that she's glad that Corey has not proposed to Taylor yet. She says they have a lot of work to do and she thinks that's more important right now. Kate says if they want to marry each other, that'll always be there. Let's just work on the relationship first. Corey says that he likes the fact that they're both on this family reunion because it enables them to be by themselves and work on their relationship issues. So now we have Sean and Jade and Sean is asking Jade about what happened with the house. Jade says that they went lower on the offer, which pissed her off because she thought they were going with her counter offer. Jade says that she's so sick and now she's getting all these emails about the house. Jade says that what they want is not as much. It's still going to make a profit, but she's tired of going back and forth. 
Jade says we're over budget on the wedding. A lot of their money went into this house. And so she has no choice really. She's gonna have to accept this offer. Sean says it's definitely a big weight off of their shoulders. It's going to alleviate a lot of stress, especially with the wedding. Jade says that after the honeymoon, she's gonna go sign the paperwork for the closing. Says with selling the house, she has to handle everything and she would like if Sean could pick up some of the slack. Jade says that it's a lot to deal with and she's not happy right now. So Corey and Taylor went to go take a nap and Kate and Tyler went to go get in the pool. They're talking about the building block exercise, but the conversation is not about their building blocks. The conversation is about Corey and Taylor's building blocks. And Tyler was saying he had no idea about a lot of things until that last block said trust. Tyler says that he thinks it would be very smart if Corey and Taylor got some more couples counseling. He says that he thinks that it can help both of them a lot because cheating is a whole different ball game. So now Kate is talking to Tyler about Mackenzie and Josh. They've been divorced for years. Why are we talking about that now? Because she's about to come on the show, isn't she? She is so boring. Mackenzie was so boring. Why is she here? MTV, why is Mackenzie getting more time? Why is she getting more screen time? So Kate sets up her arrival. Good grief. She talks about how Mackenzie was with Josh and now they're not together anymore. Kate is still talking to Tyler about how the both of them met up with Josh and Mackenzie. Mackenzie was boring from what I remember. I don't even remember what Teen Mom she was on. She was so damn boring. Was she on Teen Mom 3? Girl, I don't remember. All I know is that Josh never really wanted to be with her from what I remember. And he didn't seem to know how to be a man and say, hey, I'm really done this time. So that's why they kept going back and forth for a long time. He had to just let it go. I'm glad she finally let it go and realized your life is not over just because you get a divorce. Tyler says that he was very surprised that Mackenzie got away from Josh because she was very attached to him. Kate says that Mackenzie is in a new relationship and she's guessing that she's happy with this guy. Kate says when Cheyenne and Jade set up this reunion, they're still sticking to that story. Kate says they always invite everybody. She says that Mackenzie reached out to her and said that they were coming. Kate says that she thinks that working with the coaches will help Mackenzie a lot to move on you telling me I have two more three more couples that I got to look at in addition to y'all oh my god Kate says that maybe the counseling will help Mackenzie to move on because she's sure that she has a lot of trauma left back from her ex and then Kate says to Tyler I hope Cheyenne will be okay with that. Kate tells us that Cheyenne and Mackenzie went through some things. It's based on Mackenzie using some derogatory girl. Why they bring this girl right back on the show? I ain't gonna say she's a racist, but there are really some people that need to watch their damn mouth. So I already didn't want to see boring ass Mackenzie because she's boring as I rather, you know what? I rather watch a bowl of oatmeal for an hour. Seriously. I'd rather watch a bowl of oatmeal than watch Mackenzie on any reality show. And then on top of that, now you have this situation. Now I really don't want to see her on here. Kate says when Cheyenne spoke up about it, people dragged her into it more than she should have been in it. If she spoke up, then she knew what she was in for. I mean, you know what the hell you talking about? And Kate, I don't know why you're trying to act like this would be a problem with Cheyenne. Trust and believe Cheyenne knows she's coming. Y'all said y'all invited everybody. I'm pretty sure Cheyenne knew that y'all was inviting Mackenzie as well. This is not a surprise for her at all. Um, I just want to make sure she's okay with Mackenzie coming. She's okay with it. She already knows about it. And you go into her and asking her because the MTV producers told you to. If y'all don't stop wasting my mother freaking time, I know something. Tyler feels that this is a place where Mackenzie can work on herself and be educated. She'll be able to apologize and take accountability with Cheyenne. Kate says that it's been pretty drama free this whole entire time. She would like to keep it that way and she doesn't want Cheyenne to be blindsided. Kate says that she's excited to see Mackenzie but she might be the only one that's excited. So Kate figures to make some nice little bouquet baskets because they're going to have a lingerie party. You think I want to be in a house with other couples half ass naked with men who are not my husband? MTV, y'all really did not think this out very well. Kate says when Jade and Cheyenne got everything together, they asked each couple to plan an activity and Caitlin and Tyler 
have decided to plan a lingerie party. That's going to be another assault to my damn eyes like last episode. Kate says that her and Tyler have the best intimacy in the house, so they just wanted to set up the atmosphere for intimacy amongst the other couples. Kate says everybody's taking a nap right now and that's not what this trip is about. Ma'am, if I'm on vacation, I'm napping as much as I want. So Kate goes from room to room and tells everybody that they're doing this party tonight and they fill these baskets up to the brim with toys so kate goes to jade and sean and jade and sean obviously jade is still not well sean is gonna he's gonna take an out lucky you sean lucky you i wish i could but unfortunately i can't taylor says she's feeling a little uncomfortable because she has a mommy body girl where is it where is it wish i had your body girl everybody's getting ready what in the hell is Corey wearing and why is his out what the hell Corey turned around and his hairy out and this is the reason why Cheyenne is making this face. Cheyenne did not intend on seeing Corey's hairy behind. She expected him to make a behind hole of himself but this is where we are. So everybody's ready for this romance party. It's what it should be called. This lingerie party. All of the toys as you can see on this table over here are set out. And just looking at this is making me uncomfortable. Tyler says they've been doing some emotional stuff. Let's just let loose have some fun and do some intimate stuff. Macy says it looks like a dungeon in there. Cheyenne says she thinks the people that need this lingerie party the most is Corey and Taylor. Cheyenne says that Taylor is a bit more reserved. Cheyenne says after what happened today she hopes that doesn't dictate what happens for the rest of the night with Taylor. So Corey's going to go get Taylor and he says here that things were very heavy with the workshop thing and you know this is really not Taylor's thing at all but he wants her to feel comfortable. Corey says that he wants Taylor to to be able to let go and relax a little bit. Taylor says that she feels a bit uncomfortable. Says Corey's making her feel good about herself. He's doing a good job at it. They're drinking again. Kate says they're at the lingerie party and before it gets too wild, she says she's going to talk to Cheyenne about Mackenzie. So Kate talks to Cheyenne about Mackenzie coming and asks how she feels about it. Cheyenne says it's been two years since she spoke to Mackenzie and Cheyenne says she was really okay with leaving all of that in the past. She's really not sure how she feels. Zach says Mackenzie's coming and Cheyenne says her and her new black boyfriend. The way Cheyenne said that tells me that she still has a problem with her or has some type of issue with I thought that was freaking funny. Because how you going to call people colored and then go out and get you a quote colored boyfriend? Ciao. Cheyenne explains to the group that Mackenzie made some comments online. She had nothing. Cheyenne herself had nothing to do with those comments. Cheyenne says she asked if she could call her because apparently she was the only black person that she knew. And Cheyenne says that she talked to Mackenzie for about an hour. Mackenzie didn't know nothing about segregation. Excuse me? So Cheyenne says she broke down so many things to Mackenzie that she figured, okay, I got through to her. She, she understands. And Cheyenne says at the end of the conversation, Mackenzie was very grateful that Cheyenne had this conversation with her. Okay, keep in mind, they're about to get off the phone and Mackenzie's all thankful right after she's thanking Cheyenne for talking to her she says this oh my god I'm so appreciative you had this conversation with me my husband thought you were gonna be an angry black wow I just don't know what to say I'll be speechless when I hear the ignorance sometimes I've never heard anybody say that wow that's disgusting well Cheyenne says she tweeted ignorance is pervasive Cheyenne says that Mackenzie took offense to that was basically saying that Cheyenne accused her of being ignorant, which that's not exactly a lie. Cheyenne says she was definitely calling Mackenzie out. From there, it just was a back and forth of her accusing Cheyenne of calling her ignorant and all this crap that I'm not gonna go back and forth about. Mackenzie went on live. She was on live crying, I guess, to get sympathy, right? And the next day, Cheyenne says people were calling her parents' business. A white woman came to her house and was wanting, wanting to know why she was messing with Mackenzie and all this stuff. Zach says that he's saw what shy went through when that whole mckenzie thing happened zach says it was no joke and it really was a scary and dangerous situation says that mckenzie needs to just grow from it do the work and not depend on cheyenne to teach her cheyenne says that it's been two years since all that and mtv you wanted to give mckenzie a storyline so bad none of this was even worth talking about this happened two years ago it didn't happen two months ago it didn't even happen two weeks ago it happened two entire years ago and y'all digging this up from the dredges from the dungeons from the pits of hell just so Mackenzie can have a storyline when she comes up in this damn house 
Y'all should have let her stay home. Diane says she's just going to pray that Mackenzie has grown since that experience. Kate says that Mackenzie has been working on herself. Says the thing about Mackenzie is she believes that she has good intentions. She doesn't think that she has an evil bone in her body. And that's the thing. You be thinking that people don't have an evil bone in their body. And then when you throw water on them, they be melting like the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay. You just do not know. Kate says, but at the same time, people have to take accountability. And she says, Cheyenne is very much into giving people grace. Kate says, will she want to confront her on some things? Maybe. So Cheyenne says, to be quite honest, if she walked in, would she be like, hey girl, hey? She's like, absolutely not but cheyenne also says am i gonna be like come on it's on she says no cheyenne says that she's open to sit down and have a conversation with Mackenzie if she were to want one so cheyenne hopes that there's been some growth with Mackenzie. after this conversation they get down to partying again and by partying i mean throwing their butts in the air and throwing it around in a couple circles and drinking like crazy people and jade and sean are upstairs having the peaceful time of their lives i'd give anything to be a chair in that room they say they're all on the same floor so i don't want to see what's going on out there more of Corey with his speech about yay we're here bettering ourselves for our women blah 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 so the bartender interrupts or whatever and says this is a tradition of Colombia, and it is a, a little glass bowl of bugs and the bugs are ants and these are supposedly i don't know if it's true or not but they are supposedly a natural aphrodisiac so of course Corey takes a bunch of ants and eats them of course now all of a sudden for no reason the men jump into the pool kate is like what is going on here you have all these men without no draws on in the pool around different wives so i think it's weird it's the next morning and everybody is hungover kate says they don't drink like this anymore they have three kids at home they party a little too hard and tyler says he has a hangover that's hard as f so jade comes in the kitchen and sean asks her if she's feeling better and she says she's not 100 percent, but she's feeling a little bit better and she says she heard that the guys were jumping into the pool and she was so glad to be upstairs. Jade says that she's starting to feel like herself and she's starting to have more energy. Her cough isn't as bad. So who do we have here walking in the door? Dr. Mike. Cheyenne says, I just woke up. I am so tired of these coaching sessions. You y'all having a coaching session every single episode now. This is Sean and Jade's private session. Jade says right before she got sick, her and Sean had a really big argument. Jade says she's glad she's feeling better because there's really a lot of things that her and Sean need to iron out. Dr. Mike says they are two weeks away from their wedding, so this is a very important session. Dr. Mike says that he wants them to walk down the aisle and feel super close to each other. He wants them to feel like this is the most beautiful moment of their lives. So Dr. Mike basically tells Jade to tell Sean what she wants in this relationship. And what Jade wants from Sean is for them to play more of a traditional role where to me that seems like he takes a little more charge and she steps back a little bit. Jade says to Sean that she wants him to be more assertive, to be more of a man, and to handle more things. Then we have the flashback. Sean says that Jade is very much the type of woman that feels like if, if she doesn't do it herself, it ain't going to get done right. Sean says that he definitely would take that dress off of her if she will allow him to. And what Sean wants from Jade is for her to release and give him some of that burden. Dr. Mike says, at the moaning exercise, that was really hard for you. Tell me about that. Sean says that he told himself it was okay that he could have a few drinks. Sean said that it made him feel like he wasn't himself. He says that he was split second angry all the time. So Sean says by the time they got to the exercise, he was ready to rage. Jade says that Sean does that. He makes up in his mind that he's not going to participate and he won't. Dr. Mike says like a like a little kid or like a little boy and Jade says yes, throws a tantrum. And Dr. Mike asks Jade, how does that make her feel? And Jade says that it makes her feel like a mom and that I have to discipline him. Which Jade says she hates being because she feels like she's been Sean's mom for so long. Sean says that Jade is so stern all the time and Dr. Mike says he feels that. Dr. Mike 
says to Jay that he's also very interested in the fact that you disclosed to him that you're afraid of getting pregnant and that's why intimacy was put on hold. Dr. Mike says to Jade, what would you need to feel comfortable getting pregnant again? Jade says the experience of having a baby was so negative. Sean admits to being a piece of crap back then. So they have a flashback of one of their many arguments. I know I recapped that episode. I think that was young and pregnant. Jade was saying that she didn't have any help when she had the baby. Jade says her parents were addicts and nobody would help her with the baby. And then Jade says she was left for an entire year on medication from being depressed. Dr. Mike says, now I'm starting to understand why you're so afraid to have a baby. Jade says that if they had another baby, would they go through that same exact thing again? So Dr. Mike says, again, tell Sean what you need. And Jade says, I need for you to let me move at my own pace on my own time jade says when she's comfortable and when it's a good time for her and so dr mike says when is that time jade says she needs probably about two more years Don says that he's not trying to rush jade to have another kid and i never thought he was and i don't even know honestly why dr mike brought this up because jade never said she never ever ever wanted to have a baby again dr mike says what he wants to take out of their relationship is the mind reading says that communication can make the relationship better not just with the emotional things but with the physical as well jade says that she thinks the session with dr mike was very helpful he thinks that both of them released some traumas well, sean says that he definitely believes they're making progress as a couple they're both putting in the effort okay they really set up this mckenzie thing i am not excited for this chick oh god you know who's playing that is landing she says i'm mckenzie and you know me from girl i know you from nowhere I do reviews. I've done Team Mom reviews for many, many years. And I can honestly say I don't remember where you're from. Mackenzie was on Team Mom 3. That's right. Um, Brianna was on Team Mom 3 too. Yeah, I totally forgot about Mackenzie because she was boring, like I said. So, Cassanio, y'all are killing me with these names, okay? First of all, it's hard enough to say regular words with braces. This is Cassanio. He is Mackenzie's boyfriend. Cassanio is from Jamaica. He's a teacher. And I think I heard him say a soccer coach. He says he He's never been a part of the teen mom experience. Pisanio, I don't like new people. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Guys, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't like new people on my shows. I really don't. Cassanio says he's the teen mom virgin. And did you just get these braces, Cassanio? I can tell you did. You know how I know? I can tell you how I know. Because the way you are moving your mouth is like you're not quite used to the braces yet. So Mackenzie asks Cassanio if he's nervous. Y'all know I'm freaking nosy. Don't play with me. Is that your real name? Because it don't sound like a real name. Oh, it is you. Oh, you really are a soccer player. You're 29, you were born in 1994. You're a footballer? Hold on. So are you like, are you like a celebrity in Jamaica? What? Oh, he's kind of a big deal, y'all. Pisanio really is a paid actor. Okay, I feel like he's a paid actor because look at all this, look at all these accolades. That's crazy. I don't know how coincidental that is that he's a footballer in Jamaica. Mackenzie said she met Cassanio on the computer. You know, I've been searching for someone. I don't know the rest. I don't know lyrics. What the hell you think I am? So Mackenzie says she gave Cassanio her number. If he called, he called. If he didn't, he didn't. And he did. And so from there, uh, it's been a whirlwind, quick romance. They've only been together a year, but she feels like she's known him for a lifetime. Mackenzie says that he is such a level-headed guy and she's not used to that. Before, she didn't think she deserved that. So Cassanio asks Mackenzie if she's nervous and she says she's kind of just here. She's going with the flow. Mackenzie says the last time TV saw her, we were all bored to tears kidding <laughs> she didn't say that <laughs> Mackenzie said the last time we saw her life was different so basically she was married she was in a, a terrible marriage with this terrible guy and now she's free so she found out that Josh cheated and yeah he cheated a few times and she finally was like you know what let me just get get the hell out of here so Mackenzie said around the time her mom passed away is when she made that ignorant comment and she recognizes that it was ignorant so Mackenzie said the backlash that she got on that comment was the straw that broke the camel's back I can never get these phrases right y'all Mackenzie says that she apologizes to everybody that was affected by her comment says that she needs to apologize to Cheyenne in person she says she already did the damage my question is why did it take you two years to do this why did it take you a tv show to do this why couldn't you do this without the cameras I always I always wonder that Mackenzie says all she can do is do better said that her life was very much life-changing last year and she found happiness and peace with
So now everybody's having dinner. The vibes are good, is what Tyler says. And Mackenzie and Canario, is that his name? Mackenzie says that she doesn't want to have issues with anyone and she doesn't want anyone remembering her as a type of person that hurt them. But she can't just come in the house and act like there's not tension there. So Mackenzie's trying to find her way through this big freaking house and she says that she feels like her heart's gonna pound out of her chest and girl, if I were you, I would feel the same way too. Mackenzie's telling Kensario, did I say his name right? I mean, did I say his name wrong again? I'm so sorry. Cassanio. Cassanio. That is a hard name to remember. Mackenzie tells Cassanio to go inside first. She's she's like, she's not trying to go in there first. Girl, either way, they're going to see you. You might as well just go in. So Tyler yells, yay, the new people. And Char, I almost called you Charmaine. What is wrong with me tonight? Diane says, here we go. Anyway, guys, we are knocking out these recaps. So yeah, like I said, I'm going to catch up. Stay tuned on my channel and I will be coming with a brand new show to recap Love in Paradise. I don't think I've ever recapped Love in Paradise, although I've been watching it since it came out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.